Here's the thing, or rather three things about Estonia. One, the Baltic country is tiny, actually 378 times smaller than Russia, its not so friendly eastern neighbor. Two, Estonians have won a world record 11 wife carrying championships. And three, best for last year, Estonia has the most tech savvy government in world history. In Estonia, almost every citizen has this high-tech ID card with a rather low-tech name. It's just called ID card. Nonetheless, this card is connected to a series of databases that has each citizen's medical history, their financial records, their grades from school, and a bunch of other personal data. Look, I know, a lot of you probably have this information stored online too, but it's likely spread out all over the place. I have 11 different logins just for my financial accounts, and I'm not rich at all. I mean. Look at this studio. Do you think I get paid well? Anyway, what makes Estonia different is this platform called X-Road. Running a modern state is a data-centered endeavor. The X-Road makes life simpler for both the state and the citizens. For example, when a child is born, information about the birth is sent directly from the hospital to the population register. This prevents the creation of excessive paperwork and saves time. X-Road allows you to share any piece of your digital identity in an instant. So if you meet a new doctor or a mortgage lender or you're applying for a job, just hand over the ID, type in a pin, and boom, they've got all the information they need. Now, if you're tempted to say, so what at this point, I wonder if you've ever had to fill out confusing tax forms or waited in line at the Department of Motor Vehicles or had to submit to a background check. As an aside, when I was being considered for this job, Beam actually couldn't verify that I graduated from college. I had to send them a copy of my diploma and my college transcript, and I edited a photo of me on graduation day for good measure. I digress. The ID card works in tandem with another simple but important innovation in Estonia, digital signature. A digital signature is just as valid as one made with ink. But it gets even better. With the mobile ID, Filippo can sign documents, make bank transfers, and more, all from his mobile phone. I don't want to go on a long tangent here, but digital pin-based signatures should be much more common. I mean, verifying someone's handwritten signature seems a little 1700s to me. That's a pretty large signature, Johnny. What's very 21st century, the fact that 95% of Estonians file their taxes online. On average, it takes them less than five minutes. For comparison's sake, the IRS says it takes the average American 13 hours to file their taxes. Overall, 99% of state services in Estonia are available online. That's things like filing contracts, fighting traffic tickets, applying for benefits, even voting in elections. And keep in mind, a lot of the reasons people didn't vote in the 2016 U.S. elections had to do with logistics, 39% overall, based on my read of a Pew study. Online voting might be a solution to that. Back to Estonia. One of the only things you can't do online is file for a divorce. I kind of get that. But all of this crazy efficiency in Estonia isn't just a massive relief from the pains of bureaucracy. It saves the country a ton of money. They estimate about 2% of their GDP. This had an additional effect of dramatically increasing compliance. People paid their taxes, which allowed us to reduce taxes. And suddenly the Estonian government found out that they had budget surpluses. The efficiency can also save your life. Doctors at the emergency room can ascertain your full medical history, like what medications you're allergic to or what your blood type is, while you're still in the back of an ambulance. Amazing. But there's an obvious big question. Is this secure? Can the system be hacked or attacked? Well, it has. Back in 2007, Estonia was taking down a statue of a Russian soldier. Bad history with the Russians, more on that in a second. In a weird form of retaliation, Russia, that's what most experts believe at least, attacked Estonia's cyber infrastructure and took it offline for the day. This was one of the first full-scale cyber attacks on a nation, and yeah, the system was eventually restored and no information was lost, but it was a massive wake-up call. A cybersecurity expert from George Washington University who studies Estonia told me, of course you can't eliminate all vulnerabilities, no country has really, but Estonia has learned a ton of lessons from that 2007 scare, and they're absolutely obsessed with their cybersecurity. It is a major priority for them, not an afterthought like it is for most countries. For instance, Estonia has adopted blockchain technology to make sure their data isn't corrupted. Now, the blockchain 
is something you should just Google. I do and not besides have time. Besides just Googling, you should subscribe to this channel because we have a whole series of videos coming out about cryptocurrencies and blockchain and all that fun stuff. Yeah, for sure. Subscribe, watch out for Jack's series. It's gonna be awesome. Anyway, Salufo, that's the cybersecurity expert, also made a really interesting point that I was gonna just steal from him, but I kind of felt bad about it, so here I am citing him. He said that the reason this digital society works isn't thanks to some sort of technical supremacy, it's cultural. It's something in Estonia's DNA. Kids are taught to code as early as kindergarten there. There's free and fast wireless internet throughout the country, and tech is just in their bloodstream. The country produced Skype, it's a leader in autonomous vehicle research, the government has offered digital citizenships to attract foreign entrepreneurs. They've even discussed launching their own cryptocurrency. Exactly why you should subscribe and watch more. All in all, actually, Jack, could you push in that board? All in all, the tech industry has been a major reason the Estonian economy is one of the biggest and most surprising success stories in the last 25 years. And this whole e-Estonian culture is really thanks to the Soviets in a weird way, because Estonia regained their independence from the Soviet Union in 1991. The Soviets had left them in terrible shape. The economy was in shambles. There were long lines for food. Bread and dairy were rationed. More than half the country didn't have telephones. Not cell phones, I mean landlines. So basically, Estonia had a blank slate of a country to experiment with. So they went digital, they went high tech, and the experiment has largely worked out. Sure, there was a security flaw in the ID card, but it was quickly patched, and a study found their online voting might be vulnerable to fraud, but the Estonian government disputes that, and really, everything is vulnerable to fraud. At least, this system is new. It's going in the right direction. You become a model for how citizens can interact with their government in the 21st century. I should have called uh, the Estonians when we were setting up our healthcare website. Now, will Estonia's digital revolution work elsewhere? Maybe not. There's a major question about whether this could scale to a larger society. Estonia, after all, has about 1.3 million residents. That's smaller than the New York City borough. I live in. And I think most people are reluctant to entrust all their personal information to their government, and maybe for good reason. But curiously, we trust tech companies with a lot of this same information. As the former chief information officer of Estonia once said, there is no government that knows more about you than Google or Facebook. Okay, that's today's episode. I'm gonna go live my life. This is my friend Link. <laughs> He's staying with us for a little while. He's from Estonia. You're kidding.